Thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment and lifestyle stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Nimi Dekombi and Ife Oluwa Oshoke. Hello. Hello. Ah, what happened to you? There's something always happening to your name. <laughs> 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 what happened you to you? Try to turn a new leaf. I just like. said hello to you guys. You know, you said hello. 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 You know, when they're pushing you from the video, they Don't, don't. Uh -uh. Okay, what's up there? Um, I hope all you doing with me. <laughs> because they'll be so on my mind. You, wow. <laughs> yes, you if should know why. Catch you. No, you should know why they're on my mind. I, 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 I think they will me. I, I also know. Mind. I also know why she's <laughs> on your mind. <laughs> All right, so hi, um, Nimi, they come be Hello, Elsie Godwin. Elsie. Elsie. Elsie Godwin. Elsie. Elsie. Oh, goodness. Okay, let's just Elsie. move Elsie. In peace. Elsie. Elsie. <sighs> Twitter fans are blasting Kim Kardashian. Is it Twitter now or Instagram? I don't know. But yeah, for promoting her new fragrance, hours after morning, Kobe Bryant's demise. So... <sighs> Well, I like the way you side because people are just. I mean, I get oh, where they're words. coming from. It's it's an no no no. I mean, I get it. They are being emotional. Yeah. They feel like um, she probably has a personal relationship with Kobe, Kobe to an extent to at least hold of some things, even if it's just for 48 hours mm -hmm. or so. But life goes on for exactly. You need to. You, if there were, if you didn't learn anything yesterday mm -hmm. and day before yesterday. At least from this story, you have to learn something, understand that life goes on. What you have is now and yourself. Enjoy it, because if you're gone tomorrow, in fact, if you're gone the next minute, everybody, even if you don't want to move on, at some point, she you probably have wouldn't must even have the next minute to on. advertise that fragrance. Exactly. Thank you. And, and when is this the best is time for her to <laughs> and this is a fragrance that's coming out for Valentine. So I mean, so she has less than two weeks. You know, I feel like people are just once again in their feelings. I understand. We just lost Kobe. But business, because I read, I went through the you know comment section, and some people were like, "Business is business. You cannot mm. say that a businesswoman should put her business on hold." Okay, before you carry of... on that thought, and before Ife comes in, let's go on a very quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories, and of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still. End up as a useless child. I decide every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dull. Everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. That's why they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature minded people that got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early. Sleeping early. Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Before we went on that very quick break, Nimi, you were touching yeah. on the story. So like I was saying, I said business is business. It's just like saying that, okay, maybe people that worked in a circle. I mean, even the night that Kobe Bryant died, there was still a game. That night, they didn't stop the mm. game that happened. But that was quite sad, though. Yeah, that was very, very sad. Because yes, it was the very, emotion very was okay, let's depressing. But like one. I said, people's business, you can't expect, even, okay, we can't say that Kim Kardashian is like a very close friend to Kobe Bryant. They might have been in the same space circle. and in the same yeah. circle. But that doesn't mean that she has to pause her own business because of Kobe Bryant. And I'll also say this, that that means that people are going to, if they can do this to Kim Kardashian, I can't imagine the pressure that they will put on Vanessa Bryant. If she should come out and maybe she starts, maybe she moves on after a few years or a few months and then of people will start hounding. Exactly, people need to realize to that people are going to move on. People cannot keep on focusing on what happened in the past. We have paid our respects to Kobe Bryant, but we cannot now say because of Kobe Bryant died, we will now stay 
in the moment of when Kobe Bryant died. People are still giving their tributes. People are still giving, you know, they are still eulogizing the man. Even Kobe Bryant will want you to pick yourself up and move Do you understand? You know, I even saw a tweet. Somebody was like, we are all here mourning Kobe Bryant, and I'm sure that Kobe Bryant will want us to hit the gym and do something else. So that's the kind of person this man is. He says he hates laziness. So using um, Kobe Bryant to say, okay, I'm not going to move on with my business, or I'm not, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to stop posting. I'm going to, that's, that's not the, I don't think that's the lesson that we should get from Kobe Bryant's life. Yeah, I totally agree with what you just said because um, at the end of the day, like I said yesterday, no one is promised the next minute. So yeah. you, when is the best time to promote your own personal business? Do you understand? It's fair enough to say that, okay, um, his family members are still mourning, so they, they should put other things on. Oh, they will look insensitive, but they're not related in any way. <laughs> so for crying out loud, she can go on. And this is a lesson for everyone as well, that look, the moment you die, Life goes on. Goes on. Do you understand? So don't think like anybody owes you anything when you mm -hmm. die. So live your best life and just hope that when you die, you'll be remembered for good things. That's exactly. it. Mm. And it's also important to mention to these people, as much as I say I understand where they're coming from, we can get really sentiment sentimental and emotional. Mm -hmm. um, all you say about Kim is probably the fact that she can go naked when she wants to. Mm -hmm. She puts out a post on Instagram. But that is their life. That is their business. And don't be surprised that from 2019 before the second sorry before the last quarter of 2019 they probably already had a calendar of everything mm -hmm. she's going to yeah. put out for 2020 mm -hmm. so it's a business and they're not going to stop running it's, 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 it might be instagram for you and you following your favorite celebrity but it's but business but for everything nobody knew kobe was going to die nobody knew kobe was going to yeah. die so how would they just Again, may you so rest in peace. May Amen. So rest in peace. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next story. We call the man who was the inspiration behind Chrissy Teigen wanting to visit Nigeria, Michael from the reality TV show, the one Ife really loves. Well, he has finally married his Caucasian fiance in Lagos, Nigeria, after his visa application was denied. So people are really happy for him. Very, very. Ife. Hmm. Um, yeah, because this was a step in the right direction. Ah. Because, um, yeah, his K1 visa was denied and it was really crying over mm. that and Aww. it was heartbroken. Yeah, it was really yeah. heartbroken because he really wanted to join the love of his life. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, no, but people actually think, do you know that a lot of celebrities actually follow this because um, yes. when it was posted, when the wedding, I saw David Doe, I think I saw Dr. Dollar, mm. I think mm. I saw Olami Day say that and their comments were, ah, this guy really loves this mm. woman, he really mm. loves Angela. You get, everybody thinks it's, genuine, it it's yeah. genuine love, do you understand? I don't so, think everybody thinks no, no, I'm just saying like Most a lot of Nigerian people, celebrities are also people, following this and they are saying it's at least I may, I just mentioned three out of yeah, all the ones I can't remember. Some comments the can be sarcastic. Exactly. No, no, no they can't <laughs> all be sarcastic. <laughs> Ah, but at the end of the see, day, see most of the comments on. I mean, we talk about him a lot on the Adina yeah. page. Are really sarcastic because they don't want to say what is in their mind the way it is. So a lot mm. of people believe mm. that you know the reason why he's doing this is to secure the U.S. visa mm. because and everybody visa knows Nigeria is and everybody knows mm. that yeah, but that's Nigeria the whole concept of the, the show. Country. That's the whole concept of the show mm. for you to get a green card. And mm -hmm. then people need to understand that the green card is doesn't even make a citizen perm um, permanently. Mm. It's a temporary thing. I think you have about um, three to five years before you but can if neutralize. But if you marry the person... Something. Hmm? If that person calls it over, do you, Angela... Um, <laughs> The, the just like now. I mean, I'm happy for Michael. Oh, finally, I'm very, I'm very, very happy finally. for them, and I just hope um, this relationship would last because, um, he, well, he has been taking, <coughs> excuse me, Sorry. he's been taking all our uh, what they call BS. So I believe yeah. he can keep, he will keep taking it even in marriage, yeah, in sickness mm. and Why do you call them BS? Because no, don't worry, don't worry. If you watch the show, you yeah, know that it's it takes true. She a lot does of BS. have, she has like some kind of like issues. What is the show to? called again? Night <coughs> Day Fiance. Mm. Yeah. Okay. On TLC. On mm. TLC. Very, very interesting show. I love the show. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> they say divorce is not an option and it's a sin and it's not a. It's not in our tradition, but if you die and kill someone because of anger, the same people will only cry with you as you throw your life away. Try separation first, and if things don't get better, choose you. This is coming from media personality Toke Makenwa. She went mm -hmm. on to say, I know some conversations are tough, but they must be had. Nobody is worth throwing the rest <coughs> of your life in jail, or even worse, a death sentence. Anger is evil. Choose your mental health and walk away 
always. It's hard, it's tough, but one minute of anger can take away everything, mm -hmm. end of quote. Yeah. This is a reaction to the sentence yeah, um, Miriam handed Sander. to Miriam Sander. Um, a lot of people will say she deserves it, right? And I don't think she does. I was told about another um, reported case earlier today, still in the northern part of the country, mm -hmm. where another um, young lady killed her husband again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's a trend for women to be killing their husbands. No. no, I don't think it's really a trend. I think for the north, if you look at the way their culture is when it comes to marriage. Some of these women don't even have a say. You know, mm -hmm. they get married to. So it's a case of maybe you have like a 15-year-old girl and then she's married off to a 41-year-old, you know, old man, and then she ends up killing the man. But that's not the case with Miriam Sander. I think both of them were from well-to-do families, mm -hmm. and I think that was one of the reasons well why. Do. Yeah, they very, very um, well like families. That kind of so that was the reason why this case was like very, very much publicized, because it was surprising to everybody. Everybody mm -hmm. knew they had issues in their marriage, but why would you go to the extreme? stream of murdering your husband instead of just walking out of the marriage like Token Makinwa said, divorce is a much more better option than killing somebody. You should never ever get to that point in a marriage where you feel like, okay, the only way out is for you to murder your husband. I don't I think know what why. what Toke is saying is also trying to let us look beyond who committed the murder or mm -hmm. what the person did and go into looking at the kind of pressure society puts on people. Yeah, mm -hmm. So almost anywhere you raise up the issue of um, divorce, whether it's in church, just in the gathering at the Biapalo or anywhere, mm -hmm. they look at it like, why? Why would you say that? Why would you tell them to leave their husband? Do you know what it takes to have a man over your head? And, you know, so many reactions that would not even try to understand the real situation mm -hmm. of what is going on. So I think we need to move beyond that. And also as a human being, you cannot let people's standard define you because I mm -hmm. see societal standard as people's standard. And mm -hmm. sometimes when you probe people that you can say they are the gatekeepers of the standards, when you start asking them serious questions, they realize that they don't even have any concrete reason mm -hmm. to hold um, the standards, you know. So I just hope that anybody in this type of issue, or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be in your marriage or relationship, should understand that violence is not the answer. Whether you're a woman, is not going mm -hmm. to get you sympathy. Once you kill someone, you are going to get what comes after that. So no, but I still think yeah. that the death sentence is a little bit too extreme. Why? It's blood for blood. It's, but that is that that's not like the because some people raise some issues that there have been men who killed, you know, their wives, but they did not get the death sentence. Mm -hmm. Some of them just got life imprisonment or a few years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this particular on case the is like circumstances. Why? And, uh, and uh, Miriam Sanders, because I've been following the story since mm -hmm. um, for a while now, and um, it was premeditated according mm -hmm. to the evidence. Like mm -hmm. she's been thinking about doing it. She's threatened to kill him severally. It yeah. happened in the middle she, of the night. Yeah, oh. so it was, and they tried to clean up the mother scene as well. Do you mm -hmm. know, if it was something that was just um, the heat of the moment, yeah. mm -hmm. you wouldn't try to clean up. You'd be in shock. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? You're being shocked, but they tried to clean it up, make it look like oh, and then she had um, stories that didn't match. He fell on the mm -hmm. bottle. He fell on the shisha bottle, and all of that. He was. Stuck so, 21 times. So how did he fall on the bottle 21, 21 times? Time. So, make any yeah, so you get stuff like that mm -hmm. makes it very difficult not to end the, the death sentence. And I think it should be vice versa. Nobody's saying it should be handed to just a woman. Mm -hmm. A man who kills his wife should also get the sen death mm -hmm. sentence, especially when it's premeditated. But coming back to what Toke said, um, I think Toke is 100% correct on this one. Yeah. And um, a lot of people need to go beyond um, divorce being bad. No, it's not bad. Same way we tell people like, look, if you're in a space and you keep getting negative vibe, move on. If you have a friend that keeps giving you negative vibe, move on. If you have same way, if you're in a marriage that keeps giving you negative vibe, please leave. I like how and she won. also said that um, you try separation. Try separation for, exactly. First. Yeah. I mean, try separation and see how it works out. If this other person, whether it is the man of the or the woman, is ready to come to the think, table, I think in some cases have a separation isn't even necessary. The moment where um, domestic violence so, is involved, uh, exactly. I, don't I don't think, think separation. I don't. No, no, no. The idea of separation. No, the idea of separation comes from the fact that people can change. 
So um, I know <laughs> there is also an argument for and against that, yeah. but um, it has happened. People mm. do actually change. So they mm. say sure. that separation period is to see or at Evaluate. least to weigh the mm. options. You understand? Mm. The guy get help, anger management, whatever the issue is, go and get help. See a doctor, talk. see a therapist, talk mm. about it. See your mentors, your pastors, people that can actually point you well, mm. to I the right some, direction. I, I, yeah. I'm one that would always tell you that as far as domestic violence is concerned, kindly walk away. The moment mm. a woman raises her hand mm. on you, move. The moment a man does the same to you, please move. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't give them, don't give them a second I chance. Also yeah, what I was saying. Mm -hmm. okay. Actually, they talk about separation because of the value we hold yeah, for family. So I'm not going to say um, we're, the the value for family is not relevant. It is absolutely relevant. It is good, but when it threatens your life, threatens your peace of mind, mm -hmm. threatens your mental health, mm -hmm. then you have to weigh it. Is this value mm -hmm. better than a life? Like, what mm -hmm. is this? value worth a com comparison to a life so it's it's complicated but yeah. we need to be open-minded to understand that each case has to be treated with its own peculiarities yeah. I also think um, another reason why people might want to stay in violent marriages might also be because of the fact that not even because of their kids but because of maybe the vows that they took that for better for worse people should I just want taking to, that vow. to realize that to take that was is uh, not uh, domestic uh, violence that was should not it should not include your life part of the culture no of which the, culture the, it's part of the like, no, what for this one make me take that? that I'll write like my vow, vow myself. <laughs> You know, that has, I, I feel like think, people I feel I like they are bound to that vow. I don't, I don't, no, uh, church, you don't no need to. You can do your own wedding, your own self. That, you don't need to follow the, the standard no that, that society well, has, has set. Well. So I feel like some people are bound to that vow and they feel like, oh, maybe domestic violence and all those other things are part of the downside How of is marriage. domestic violence part of it? Because I don't see anywhere where, you, where it says you should... You know, there are some okay people that will say that it is better for you to stay married no matter what than for you to get a divorce, which is what Toke is saying. That those people that will tell you that oh no matter what stay in your marriage there are people that will cry if you die they will just shed a few tears and they will move on so above all and then else, I think, um, they should choose there themselves. should also be a lesson from the sander thing in as much as you have um insecurity issues in um you feel like you're um you have infidelity issues in your relationship and all of that i think um a better way of communication or a better means of communication is better than reacting with anger because mm. anger can cost you everything you've ever worked for in life so True. just try not to get angry and try to communicate if communication is not working please do divorce yeah. I was going to say, please see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like, I like, but yeah, I hope you get the message. Moving on to the next story, Meghan Markle's dad, Thomas Markle, threatens to do monthly interviews until Meghan contacts him. He made this known while speaking on Good Morning Britain. He also said he does not think Meghan is being bullied in any way or any shape wow. because of racism. Wow. Well, mm. Like I said, that, that is a very irresponsible father. I don't Which think one? he really... Meghan Markle's dad. No, no, no. Are you responding to the last statement? Yeah, or? to the last statement where he said that he doesn't think that she has been a victim of bullying <coughs> or racism because it was very, I mean, very no, clear. No, but there are a lot of people who don't believe she's that she was been a, victim. a victim of bullying or racism. Oh. So that doesn't make him totally responsible. No, I people think who don't believe that. When you look at Meghan Markle's um, her dad's behavior throughout mm -hmm. the time when she has been in the royal house, it has been very, very sketchy because he released the letter, he released one letter like this that she wrote to him, he released it to the press, and that was the one that made, you know, Ari. That was why he, yeah. you know, he, he gave them a lawsuit, and then he now said he was going to testify against Megan mm -hmm. in the court. So I'm like, you are doing all of these things, and you know, because there was another part, there was another interview that he did that he said that he said that Megan is sad. He said that he, he, he looked, he looks at her smile, and he says that that's not the smile that Megan used to have before. So now you are saying that she's sad in the royal family, but then you are now coming to come and say again that she's not a victim of bullying or she's not a victim of racism, and then you are saying that you are going to go against her in court and you are going to keep on doing monthly interviews, knowing that this thing is going to make her name to be in the news, which is what she's trying to even avoid in the first place because of her own mental mental health and other things. So I don't think at this point, I don't think he's doing what I feel a responsible father should do, which is putting their child 
child's interest hmm. at the okay, first priority. Also, but if I, what do you think he should I do? I think Megan's dad is part of the problem for um, the royal family and for Megan and Harry themselves. And I think he's also part of the reason why they would even want to leave the royal family in the first place mm -hmm. because you're the one who's been granting interviews, who's been making a, a royal look negative yeah. to, to start with. So, And I also blame the people that keep giving them the platform for this interviews because if he doesn't have this platform, anymore. I don't think anymore, but obviously. So if Thomas Marco comes to Nigeria <laughs> to have an interview with you, would you reject him? Well. We would grant him the interview. We will speak to the man <laughs> at the top. <laughs> Before you day <laughs> think about no, it. I, no, no, because um, it's um, Good Morning Britain. It's a British show. Mm. And um, he also kept on saying that um, they've hurt the Queen so much mm. and all of that. You know, he, yeah, he yeah. said a lot of things that is like he was trying to fuel the hate the, that you already yeah, have. So I think Megan. it doesn't make any sense. So I think you should sit down. Thomas should just think, think before speaking. And he's saying that he wants to bridge the gap between he and Megan. How does he think doing this is going to bridge the gap that well, you already have? I wish I wish you had more time on this, but since we don't, my opinion stays with me on this one. And that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And my thank you as always to my co-anchors, Nimide Kombi and um, Ifeolu Awashoke and the entire production team. My name is Osi Godwin saying. Thank you for watching and see you later.